Hello everybody, it's Sarah and welcome back to a very late April wrap up. Also, if you can hear a lot of barking in the background, the dogs at the dog park outside my window are currently going wild, so I don't know what that's about, but yeah, it, it, it's what's happening. So since this April wrap up is kind of late. I'm not going to do what I usually do at the beginning of my wrap ups, which is talking about the books that I am currently reading. Because to be honest, I don't think I started most of the books that I'm currently reading still in April. So, you know, it's just whatever. We'll go right into stats. So, I have, as always, my story graph stats right here. So let's talk about what I've been reading in April. I've been very slumpy recently. April was just, I don't know why, it just felt like a lot to me. Also, I was on vacation twice <laughs> in April, which kind of contradicts what I was just saying, but it still felt a lot. And it wasn't the type of vacations where I read a lot because on one of them I was with a friend and the other one was at the Leipzig book fair which you know I'm out and about the whole day and when I come back to the hotel I'm just completely beat and I don't read anything which is ironic you know going to a book fair and I'm not reading anything there but anyway here's my stats for April also I feel so weird because once again it's been ages since I sat down and filmed because a lot of the videos that I'm currently uploading uploading I am pre-filming so it's just weird. Anyway, my stats for April, I read a total of six books and 2,314 pages. My main moods were adventurous, tense, mysterious, emotional and dark. So um, yeah, kind of <laughs> not the most light moods to be honest. In terms of pace, Storygraph tells me that about two-thirds of the books that I read in April were medium-paced and about one-third of the books were slow-paced books. Page numbers, a third of the books that I read were over 500 pages, 17% were under 300 pages and then the other 50% were between 300 and 500 pages. I read, once again, only fiction. I still haven't started reading any non-fiction for this year. I, I just I need to get to it. It's, it's dramatic. Uh, but in terms of the genres, Storygraph tells me that my most read genre, as always, was fantasy, then LGBTQIA, young adult, science fiction, and lastly, historical. I read a third of the books that I read in digital and two-thirds in print, which can't be right because I only have three books here that I read physically, so it should be half-half, but it seems like I just logged one of the books incorrectly, who knows. Uh, all the books that I read were English and in terms of, or written in English, and in terms of the star ratings, I had one 2.5 star rating, two 3 stars, two 4.25 stars, and one 4.5 stars, so no five stars this month. So that was it for the story graph statistics. In terms of, you know, my diversity inclusion statistics, uh, once again, I wasn't that great in my personal opinion this month. I read two out of six books that were written by non-white authors, so BIPOC authors, if I didn't count wrong, but I don't think I did. Then three, so half of the books only that I read this month had LGBTQIA rap. And I don't think, if I remember correctly, that any of the books that I read this month had any major mental illness or disability rap. So, mm, not that happy with that this month. Let's hope that May is gonna be better. But that was it for the statistics and now let's get into my thoughts on the different books that I read. As always, I'm starting with the book that I enjoyed the least, ending with the book that I enjoyed the most. And in terms of the book that I enjoyed the least, sadly, it was one of my most anticipated releases of the year, The Daughters of Estihar by Hadir El Spy. This is the first book in an adult fantasy duology called the El Maxa duology. I already have a review filmed, which I will probably either upload this Sunday or next Thursday, depending on when I'll get around to editing it and stuff. 
so I will keep it pretty short. I just think that this book would have worked way better as a YA. Uh, so what is this about? In this book we follow two different POVs. It is adult fantasy in an Egyptian inspired setting and one of the POVs we follow is a noble lady who wants to join this magic academy but she can only do so with her parents or her husband allowing her and so she is forced into an arranged marriage by her parents because basically in this country women have no rights and stuff and they're not allowed to vote and her husband is a bit more open and more progressive than her parents he's actually quite a decent dude you know <laughs> for the situation but still regardless she's forced to marry him and after that she kind of gets involved with this political activist organization called the Daughters of Istihar and our second main character is also part of the Daughters of Istihar and she's also the former lover of the husband of our first character and so through the Daughters of Istihar the two lives kind of entwine also, the story is sapphic, however, not between the two main characters, which was what I originally thought it was gonna be. And yeah, why didn't I like it? Basically, as I said, I think this would have worked better as a YA. I thought our one main character, the noble lady, is just really annoying. It would have worked better if the focus was more on the second character, who comes from more of a working class family, because, you know, while I had some sympathies for... Our other main character, sometimes it was, it was just hard <laughs> and I just thought that a lot of the activism issues, a lot of the women's rights issues and the way that those were tackled, the way the activism was tackled just lacked a lot of nuance and it was just very flat everything for me and so yeah. But if you want to know all of my in-depth thoughts, as I said, my review will be up soon. Next, my two three-star books. I will also talk about them very quickly because, to be honest, I, I forgot half of the books that I read in April. I feel like it's been so long since I finished most of these books that I don't even remember about them anymore. But anyway, first I have Hero the Ninth by Tamsin Muir, which is the second book in the Locked Tomb series, which is, I would call it fantasy in space. I don't really think that it's a science fiction series, I think it's more of a fantasy series. And in the first book we follow Gideon who has to follow the leader of her house to this kind of weird contest which takes place in this haunted house type thing and they have to find out something while everyone is being slowly picked off and killed. Uh, it's very confusing, very hard to explain. In the second one I once again also did not necessarily 100% understand what was going on all the time. I enjoyed it slightly more than the first one. I kind of knew already where it was going, like the big twisty thing at the end I already knew that was gonna happen. The thing that I found very interesting about this one is that it is written in second person perspective and it once again proved to me why I appreciate second person perspective so much even though it's not necessarily my favorite perspective and that is because authors cannot write second person perspective without consciously using it to storytell and to world build and whatever. And so whenever you have second person perspective there's always a lot of intentionality to the storytelling which I just really really enjoy and really really appreciate. Regardless, personally I think that the person that we find out the second person perspective is written from, I thought the author didn't hit the voice of that person personally. Which I didn't mind because I didn't like that person anyway. But yeah, that's all I can really say without <laughs> spoiling anything. Uh, and aside from that, I enjoyed it somewhat more than the first book, maybe a little bit, I don't know. I'm gonna continue on still with the series, I'm still interested enough, but I don't yet see the hype that everyone has around this series. And then my second three star, which I didn't necessarily enjoy this more or less than Hero the Ninth, but my second three star is The Stolen Air by Holly Black, which is the first book in the Stolen Air duology, which is a sequel duology to the Folk of the Air trilogy. 
This is YA. I'm not the biggest YA reader anymore. I still wanted to try this. I borrowed it from my library and it, it was fine. It was fun. It was okay. I wasn't particularly into any of the characters, to be honest. Uh, it's just, you know, I think if you're into YA, I think this is gonna be an enjoyable one. And if you're not, then you know, it's whatever. If you feel like you've moved on from the folk of the year, I don't think this is a necessary read or it will, you know, blow you away or whatever. But I had fun, so that's that. Also, in this one, we follow... Well, one of the characters we follow is Jude's brother or stepbrother, I guess, Oak, who is the prince and the heir of the fairy... I've got all the things... Um, of, of the folk, basically. <laughs> of the fairies and he basically has to go on a quest and he asks our main character to help him go on this quest and there's betrayal and there's romance possibly maybe and there's just stuff so next i have my two 4.25 star books first i have ithaca by claire north this is once again a greek myth retelling and it's told from the point that's wrong. It's not told from the point of view of Penelope, but it centers Penelope, who is King Odysseus's wife, and it centers her struggles as it's been seven years since, well, it's been 17 years since Odysseus left for Troy, and it's been seven years since the war around Troy has been over, and Odysseus still isn't back and so Penelope has to obviously contend with the stutors and stuff and has to try to keep Ithaca. Why I said it's not told from the point of view of Penelope is one of the reasons why I actually really enjoyed this because this is told from the point of view of Hera. So the goddess Hera. And I just loved it. I love the writing of the story. I don't think it will be necessarily for everyone. But something that I really, really loved is this very sarcastic voice that Hera has. And sometimes the way she tells the story is very archaic and something that we're often very used to from Greek myth retellings where, you know, a lot of the writing is kind of more archaic, I would say. Okay, so I just got a phone call, so where was I? But I, right, the writing. I think. Um, it's kind of really archaic on the one hand, but on the other hand it's very sarcastic and modern, but in a way where it's like sometimes you have that and it feels like it happened unintentionally. With this one it's like really intentional and especially when Hera just talks about heroes and about how shit men are. A lot of times like when she is full of female rage she goes into this very not necessarily modern, but a very opposite end type of phrasing from her usual archaic way of telling the story or speaking. And I just really enjoyed that. I really appreciated it. And yeah, I just had a really, really good time with this one. And I can just highly recommend it. I can't wait for the sequel. I had so much fun. My second 4.25 star read was The Untethered Sky by Fonda Lee, which I had an e-arc for, and this one is her new novella. It is not in any way connected to any of the Greenbone stuff. It's about a girl whose biggest wish is to be a Rooker, I think it was called. Um, so she wants to fly with a Rook, which is this huge gigantuan bird from I think Middle Eastern mythology and that's all I want to say because it's a novella so I don't want to say too much about it and I just really enjoyed this book. I hope that maybe Fondalee is gonna write more in this world in the future but I thought this was just really well done in terms of character building, in terms of themes, in terms of 
picking out what you wanted to focus on. I thought this was a really well done novella. Obviously the characters, the world, everything wasn't as fleshed out as it would be in a series or even a standalone novel. However, Fonda Lee picked out one or two characteristics from her main character that she really focused on that you can then really see development in and she just perfectly crafted her story around a theme and then followed that theme. So I thought for a novella it's really well done. I actually went through some of the reviews on NetGalley and I was really sad because there were a lot of three star reviews and most of the people who gave it three stars said well the reason why they gave it three stars is because it wasn't what they expected. They went into it expecting something more along the lines of Greenbone Saga etc and it wasn't fleshed out enough and whatever and sometimes I read reviews and obviously whatever you feel when you read a book is completely fair but sometimes I read reviews and I'm just thinking like what did you expect? Like, you can't expect a story on the level of complexity of the Greenbone Saga, which is a trilogy of three books that I think almost all of them are over 700 pages, all of them are at least over 600 pages. You can't expect that in a hundred page story. And so for me personally, also as someone who's usually not the biggest fan of novellas, I thought this worked really well. I loved how just you could see what Fondalee chose to focus on and she just left everything else out. And in a time where I feel a lot of times fantasy novels are getting shorter, like a lot of fantasy novels now are under 500 pages, adult fantasy novels that is, and where the authors still wanna do everything and just don't have the time even in three 500 page books, I think like Fonda Lee just showed perfect restraint. And then the last book I want to talk about is my 4.5 star read, which is The Endless Song by Joshua Philip Johnson. This is the sequel to The Forever Sea and also the finale to the duology. I realized that it's just a duology and it's not a trilogy as I originally thought. In the first series, it's set in this world where, well, both of the books obviously are set in this world, uh, but you have this world where you have the Forever Sea, which is this humongous prairie of grasses that are tens and hundreds of meters high. And above this prairie, there's magic ships flying. No one knows really what's at the bottom of the sea. However, our main character, Kindred, her grandmother was last seen as she left her ship and she slowly sunk to the bottom of the sea to find out what is there. And so our main character Kindred, her mission now is to try and find out what happened to her grandmother. And that's where we start the first book. I did not quite enjoy the second book as much as I did the first book. However, that's something that I personally often experience when I go into books that I haven't heard a lot about and where I go into them basically completely blind and I'm then really surprised by how much I enjoyed it, which was the case with the first book, which is why I also gave the first book five stars. With the second book, a lot of times already having expectations and already knowing what I'm going into. It's not that my expectations are disappointed, it's just, you know, it can't surprise me anymore. So I end up not giving the books five stars because I don't enjoy them as much. Because my expectations pretty much are met and not surpassed. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. Regardless, I still really enjoyed the second book. I really liked the framing of the story in general because you have the storyteller um, that is just telling a story, um, obviously, because he's a storyteller. I'm a mess right now. I'm so tired. I cannot tell you. But anyway, you also get to meet some new characters in the second book, which I both enjoyed and sometimes didn't enjoy as much as is the case a lot of times when we get to meet new characters because obviously you love the new characters but a lot of times you just you know you're already comfortable with the old characters so you want to stay with them more however we still get to see them in the second book as well i really enjoyed our main characters kindred's journey in the second book i enjoyed her development because she has to reckon with some things and some decisions that she made in the first book and where in the first book she's really just out 
to find her grandmother. In the second book, she, you know, has to deal with some consequences. She has to go a little bit into herself and, you know, reconsider some of the decisions that she made in the past and in the first book. And so, yeah, overall, I really can enjoy this duology. I think it's something different. I think it's something fun. It's fresh and I really enjoy the characters, the world building, everything. It's queer, so what more can I say? And with all of that said, that was it for my April wrap up. If you have read any of the books and if you have any thoughts on them, tell me in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, maybe think about giving me a thumbs up and also maybe subscribing. All the links to my social media as well as to my book club of Queens, which is in Valkyries, where I read one adult high fantasy book, one adult high fantasy book written by a woman or gender queer person per month, will be left linked down below. So go and check those out. And I hope I'll see you very soon. Bye.